Melanie, we've got a terrific Australian tech story on our hands. Tell us a bit about how you got started and what exactly Canva does. So Canva is an online design platform that makes it really easy for anyone to create professional quality designs. It's been designed to be so simple that it's just literally drag and drop in the browser. We've brought together a library of a million images and so the whole design process is designed to be really easy. So say you're a small business and you're trying to create your marketing materials. Before it was really difficult to create your brochures or your Facebook covers and all that pressure to create something professional um, is really alleviated through Canva. You can create beautiful quality things very quickly. Even marketing people trying to create all their social media content or a blogger trying to create their social media posts and their blog posts, it's really simple through Canva. Okay, was this your first startup experience? This is actually our second startup. So we had previously started another company called Fusion Books. When I was at university, um, I was also teaching design programs like Photoshop and InDesign. And it would take a whole semester for students just to learn the very basics of how to use the programs. And it seemed really crazy because at the same time Facebook was taking off and that was fun and collaborative and social. And I realised in the future design would be entirely different. It would all be online, it would be really simple and very easy to use. And so that was where the idea for Canva was born. It was the idea that in the future design would be very simple, it would all be online and it would enable everyone, even if you've had no design experience, to create professional quality designs. Also, designers had a really difficult time collaborating with their clients. So you'd have to send PDFs to going backwards and forwards over and over again. And, you know, with text revisions and markups. And so we realised that it, it would be a much easier way for designers to collaborate with their clients would be able to literally just send a link. And so we are able to do that all through Canva. So how important was it going through the startup process with Fusion Books going into Canva? It was absolutely integral. We learnt so much. At the start, we were just university students. We knew absolutely nothing about startups or venture capital or how to run a company or how to build a product. And through Fusion Books, we really learnt all these really important learnings. We were going from knowing absolutely nothing to learning how to you know, run a software company and all the really important aspects. So, Cliff, what were the big learnings from your first startup that you've taken into Canva? Yeah, so with Fusion Books, we, we had no idea we were even a startup. We just had an idea of what we wanted to create. And so we pretty much had to start from scratch and, and, and learn everything from scratch, which was really a um, fun and exciting journey. Um, some of the key things we learned was really investing all our profits from the company back into Fusion Books to fund our growth rather than bring in external funding. Uh, and that allowed us to make a lot of the mistakes on our own time and money and continually grow the company without having other people involved and invested in it. So how did you fund that first business, Cliff? Yeah, so with Fusion Books, we didn't even realise we were a startup, and we didn't know that external funding was available at that stage. We were just two people sitting in a living room with a big idea. So we knew that part, the biggest part of that idea was the technology we had to have developed. So we ended up getting a loan for that uh, technology and then built everything around that. And one of the biggest drivers of growth for Fusion was investing our profits year on year back into the company. At the time, I was, had just finished uni and started a teaching degree. So teaching was the perfect job while starting a startup because it allowed me to work for six or seven hours a day doing relief teaching at school, jet back home and then um, start another full work day. And that worked really well for about six to eight months until the, the company started taking off and I could dedicate all my time to Fusion. So Mel, you've done fantastically well, raising $3 million before even having a product on the market. How did you do that? So back in 2010, I was at a conference in Perth and I had a conversation with an investor for literally five minutes. And he really opened up. At that time, we knew nothing about venture capital, but he opened up a window to that world and he was really interested in our idea. And so I went to Silicon Valley for literally a two week trip. And the very first day he said he was keen to invest if we could find a technical co-founder. And that just absolutely spun us out. But I ended up staying for three months and then um, learning everything I possibly could about startups. And then the following year, we actually eventually, after one year of going to every single technical conference we could go to, going absolutely every place we could to find a technical co-founder, we found a really great one, Cameron Adams. Um, and that literally took a whole year. And then uh, we both went back to Silicon Valley the next year for three months. Um, and then we were pitching constantly. We were revising our pitch deck literally a hundred times. We really were having questions from every single angle and that, throughout that process we learnt, met a lot of really great people. We um, 
opened a lot of doors for us in Silicon Valley. But this whole process just took years and years. Like literally, the idea for Canva came about um, five or six years ago when I was at university. So that whole process took a very long time. But now we're in a really fantastic position. We have the most amazing team we could possibly dream of. We've got great investors who back us and our vision. And we're just so excited that we finally got Canva onto the market um, after such a long time. And we're really excited what the future holds. So $3 million, it sounds like a huge sum for a startup, Mel. How do you put that to work? So Canva, if you actually log on to Canva, it's the most simple to use online design platform you can possibly imagine. Like it's been made to be so simple that you just literally search for what you want and drag it onto your page and all of a sudden you can create something that looks beautiful. But behind that, it's so technically complex. We've had to build a full stock photography library of a million images. We've had to deep etch those images so that like usually for a professional designer, it would take an hour to cut out the images. And so we've actually already done that for a whole range of images. We've had to build a vector editing program so you can literally just change the color in online um, and then we have to take that online des design that you've created and turn that into a PDF that's exactly the same sort of resolution and it looks exactly the same there's so many technically complex um, challenges that we've had to hire some of the best engineers in the world to be able to address so with that funding it's really enabled us to work with some of the best people in the world it's enabled us to pursue a very very big vision and it really has given us the power to take on a global challenge with a lot of vigour. Going to investors with you know, something that isn't launched, how developed does the idea <coughs> need to be before you take it? Having Fusion Books really helped us to prove out that we had a product that people needed. We were having schools were constantly asking to use our product for other things like their newsletters or their marketing materials. And so having that experience really helped to um, help us to raise money for Canva because people could see that we could build a product, that we could grow a company, that we knew how to manage that whole process. And so that was really integral. So the track record was almost as important as the idea itself? Absolutely. The idea is, of course, a really important aspect and the vision meant that investors were able to, people who invested really believed that we could achieve that. But being able to demonstrate that we'd done it before really helped with that process. Okay, and Cliff, through that process, how do you go about protecting your intellectual property? The approach to intellectual property is quite different between Australia and the US. So in Australia, NDAs are quite commonplace when you're discussing a technology venture. However, in the States, they're pretty much unheard of. And if you rock up to a meeting with a, a, an NDA, um, a lot, most investors won't sign it because they see deals on a daily basis. They don't want to have any conflicts of interest. So you, we pretty much had, we re had to realise that getting our idea out there was more important than keeping it close to our chest. So by telling people who could help us out, not only did it help us shape how our go-to-market strategy, but it also helped us execute our plan. Mel, there's a common perception that startup capital in Australia is almost non-existent. Is that the experience you guys had? Well, a lot of our investors are actually Australian. We've been very lucky that the investor scene in Australia is really starting to flourish. We've got some great investors such as Square Peg Capital, who was founded by Paul Bassett, one of the founders of Seek. Um, we also have Blackbird Ventures, and these are really just starting to pop up now, which is great and encouraging for Australian um, startups because they're starting to compete on the world stage with a really global outlook. So Melanie, when you went to investors, was it just cash you were looking for or was there a specific sort of profile you were after? At the start when we were raising money, we were just trying to find anyone that would actually believe in our vision and want to get on board. But we ended up with some of the best investors that were able to really help refine our vision so, and our strategy. So we've got the CFO of Yahoo and um, the founder of Google Maps, Lars Rasmussen. So not only were they able to bring cash to the company, they were able to bring us a lot of experience, a lot of strategy. Um, they helped us to hire and to find some of our team members. So Cameron Adams came from an introduction from Lars Rasmussen. Um, also Dave Herndon came from an introduction who he was one of the, sen the senior engineers at Google. Um, also, anytime we have questions, we're able to pick up the phone and just ask them or go on a web conference. Or, um, so it really helps us in a big way to be able to, um, rather than just having to draw upon our own networks, we're able to draw upon their networks and their knowledge. Was there any trepidation pitching to these guys, knowing they've got the experience and know-how to take that idea and effectively make it their own? We were completely scared when we first started pitching. Um, when I met 
um, Lars, who founded Google Maps, I could not have been more scared. We, <laughs> we had come from Perth and went to Silicon Valley and it, firstly, it was the first time I'd been to America and we're sitting there at a, ca at a cafe and I had, at that time, little, my, my little pitch deck on paper that we'd printed from my mum's living room um, on these little cards and we were, I was trying to eat food at the same time as pitch and like I'd read up about um, Silicon Valley and that the dress code was really casual and so I tried to go there dressed casually and it was hilarious because I was dr trying to dress down but I was still wearing a, a suit coat and the first thing that was said to me was I didn't need to get dress so dressed up and I was like that was the, at the start of the meeting and then by the end of it despite the fact it was very very nerve-wracking um, it was incredible to get their support. These people seemed like they were from another planet and then getting their support was just the most incredible thing ever. So was, that, people were quite receptive to, to you when you went out there? And not at the start. At the start we were, you know, even though we'd had a company before and we'd made it profitable mm -hmm. and we'd grown internationally and we'd, you know, really grown it every single year, it was very difficult to get the wheel rolling, to get people to believe that we could become this huge company that, um, but as we got the ball rolling and we found people that believed in our vision, it became a lot easier. Um, the people that backed us really believed that we could become a very big company, that we could achieve what, you know, when we were just university students in the time gone by, you know, it was way too big a dream. But by the end of it, we'd literally had to prove that we could become a billion dollar company. So Cliff, what would your advice be to other Australian startups looking to secure capital? I think for Australian companies trying to secure venture capital, I think having a big vision is important and definitely having a global focus. Certainly with the markets the way they are, you can tackle any problem almost from Australia and, and geography is no longer a constraint. So Cliff, what other types of funding did you consider for Canva? So when we were launching Canva, we explored all types of funding, from crowdfunding to government grants. So we were lucky enough to be granted a Commercialisation Australia grant, along with raising money from the venture capitalists. Um, but we also considered things like crowdsourcing. However, that's more suitable for, well, we considered it more suitable for physical products. Was the Commercialisation Australia grant a dollar for dollar situation? Yes, the Commercialisation Australian grant is a merit-based dollar for dollar funding arrangement. So Melanie, were you able to use that venture capital as your input in the grant system? Yeah, absolutely. The Commercialisation Australia program is a really fantastic program. It really helps to support Australian startups and helps them to be competitive on a global scale. So Mel, when you went to investors, was it just cash you're after or was there a specific profile you're looking for? So we'd experienced both. So with Fusion Books, we grew organically and we had no outside funding. We were quite isolated. And then we, with Canva, we've ended up with a great number of investors who all bring a lot of experience in different, asset, in different facets. Um, through that, we've been able to really get a lot of connections in Silicon Valley. At the start, we knew absolutely no one. Um, back in 2010, I met one investor at a per conference in Perth and then went to Silicon Valley for a two-week trip and ended up staying for three months. And it was only through that process that we got to really know a lot of investors. They opened a lot of doors for us and really helped to um, debate our strategy and it really helped to refine our vision. And is there anything you do differently next time? Absolutely not. The investors um, brought so much experience. It took a really long time to raise the money. It took a really long time and a lot of revisions to our pitch deck. Um, but it was only through that process that we were really able to refine our strategy. We we're trying to solve such a big problem. Um, it's a really big industry. Like We're trying to go build a stock photography library and a vector editing library and online design platform um, and all of these different things because it's such a big problem. Um, but it was only through being able to talk to such great investors that we were able to believe that we could actually achieve such a big vision. Okay, and Cliff, how do you make the most of that experience? Having these investors at the end of the phone, how do you make the most of that? Each of, our, each of our investors have different strengths, like the venture capital investors definitely have a lot of strengths around raising money and so once we started speaking with a few of them at the start of our fundraising process, they helped us close our round and gave us a strategy or helped us with that strategy to close up our round. Other investors like Paul Bassett from Seek for example, he's extremely production focused so when it comes into the operations and production side of the business, we might call on someone with those types of experience. And when it comes to financial and the CFO type stuff, we also have other investors that we may leverage for their knowledge in that particular field. So having a diverse spread of investors really helps us to pick and choose 
different people for different uh, stages of the business. Okay, so for a startup, that must save a huge amount on advisory costs that you might otherwise engage people for. Yeah, absolutely. We really use them as our advisory board and a sounding board for all, all new ideas and concepts and really gives us a leg up. A lot of those guys have learnt the lessons the hard way and can accelerate our learning in, the, in, in those particular fields. Okay, Mel, it's been a fantastic story today. It looks like it's got a bright future. What does that look like? So our vision is to be able to take people's ideas and frictionlessly turn that into a design for web or print. And we feel like we've made huge inroads in that direction, but we really are just getting started. We feel like we've achieved 1% of what we believe um, we can achieve. And we're really excited just to continue to roll that out to make it simpler and easier to, to do graphic design. And we are very excited that we're just at the beginning of the journey. Fantastic. Look forward to hearing big things from you guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much.